Everyone, please find a seat. Close doors. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Roll call. Barron. Present. Borelli. Here. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Carnegie. Crowley. Combo. Deutsch. Here. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Here. Barreras Copeland. Here. Barodnik. Here. Gentili. Here. Gibson. Greenfield. Gradenchik. Johnson. Kalos. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lansman. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Mealy. Menchaca. Presente. Mendez. Was that Mendez? I'm, I'm here. Miller. Palma. Perkins. Reynoso. Presente. Richards. Present. Johnson. Here. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Present. Vaca. Malone. Here. Williams. Here. Matteo. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Speaker Mark Viverito. Thank you. Quiet in the chambers, please. May we ask the gentleman to remove his cap? Gentlemen, please remove your caps. All rise for the invocation. Could you remove your caps, please? All rise. Be delivered by the great Reverend Victor T. Hall, the senior pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in the great borough of Queens. Quiet in the chambers. Let us pray. Dear God, our heavenly Father, and our eternal friend, in whom we live and move and have our very being. This is the day that you have made, and we rejoice and are glad in it. We thank you for this august body of public servants. We thank you for our speaker, Melissa Mark Veverito, for our public advocate, Tish James, and for Councilman Ira Danique Miller and all of the city council persons in this body. Lord, we thank you for the immeasurable gifts and talents you have invested in the members of our council. We thank you for their determination, for their sacrifice of time and service and labor. And Father, even as we recognize all that you have given to each member, we yet come to ask for your guidance and for your strength. For without you, we can do nothing. 
Lord, I ask for this city council that you will give to the members the courage that you gave to Samson. Grant to them the wisdom that you gave to Solomon, the commitment to justice that you gave to Isaiah, and the love and the compassion and the kindness that you gave to Jesus Christ. Bless this house. Let your presence meet as they meet to do a work that is pleasing to you and that will aid and benefit and help all New Yorkers. We thank you this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Hey, easy on that. Easy Quiet in the chambers. Quiet in the chambers. Quiet in the chambers. A motion to spread the invocation of my mother's pastor, <laughs> Reverend Hall, in full upon the record by Council Member Ira Danique hey. Miller. Hey, hey. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you all the story after that. Uh, motion to spread the invocation in full on the record. Uh, it is my pleasure to welcome Pastor Hall to City Hall today, to these chambers, in particular in the times uh, that our city and our nation find themselves, in particular those who have been de devastated throughout the diaspora from the forces of nature. For as a great inspirational uh, pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in Jamaica, Queens, better known as the Friendly Church on the Boulevard, um, he has demonstrated the type of compassion and concern that is necessary uh, to see us, our city through these times and he is deeply concerned about all humanity. Because of his leadership, uh, we have seen in Southeast Queens some of the first grandparent housing throughout the United States. Um, we have also seen through the, the Imani ministry our young people go from the streets to universities. We've seen through the uh, food ministry thousands of folks uh, be fed. And as a Phi Beta Kappa Morehouse man, um, he has demonstrated the leadership um, learned through the Union Theological Sem Seminary um, that he has the type of passion uh, to really serve. Let me just say this. I'm going to go off the record and say something about my good friend and my neighbor, um, beside the fact that he is a, a Dallas Cowboy fan. Um, we forgive you here in this chamber here. Um, that it is said that nations sh shall be judged on how they treat the least of us. Because we have housed those who were, who were homeless, and we have fed those who were hungry, and we have closed those who were naked and out of doors together. And that leadership, I am very, very proud to welcome you here to this chamber and that leadership that you have demonstrated. So it is my pleasure again, once again, to, uh, to spread the invocation and welcome Pastor Victor T. Hall to the chambers of the People's House. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Miller. <clears throat> Thank you. May I, may I? Madam Advocate, may I just say, uh, I have a quick question. Is it against city code if I put the councilman on my payroll? <laughs> I, I would just like for him to come and give that introduction to my members, because if he introduces me, I think I might get a raise this year. He can do that without getting paid. <laughs> thank you, Reverend Hall, and thank you, Ira Danique Miller, Councilmember Miller. Adoption of minutes, Councilmember Debbie Rose. Ira. <laughs> <Shh>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of August 9th, 2017, be adopted as printed. Thank you. <laughs> Messages and papers from the mayor. M547, Mayor's Management Report. Received order printed and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Pre-considered M548, transferring funds between agencies. Finance. Pre-considered M549, fiscal 2018, capital budget. Finance. 
Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M550 and 551. Coupled on call-up vote, please. And I will uh, ask for a roll call vote on land use call-ups. Quiet in the chambers as we engage in a roll call. Barron. Borelli. Idle. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegie. Crowley. Deutsch. Aye. Drum. Espinal. Eugene. Aye. Ferreris Copeland. Garodnik. Aye. Gentili. Aye. Greenfield. Gordenchik. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Kalos. Kalos. King. I don't know. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Maisel. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Mendez. Aye. Miller. Miller. Palma. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rodriguez. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Vaca. Aye. Ballone. Aye. Williams. Barron. Matteo. Van Bramer. Rodriguez. Speaker Mark Viverito. I vote aye. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 38 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Quiet in the chambers as we now hear from the speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito. Quiet in Thank the you, Madam Public, Advocate, uh, Madam Public Advocate. I want to ask um, if we can stand for one moment of silence for all, rise. all the victims of all of these hurricanes, the catastrophes that have occurred. We're voting on a construction bill today. We've had too many construction workers who have died. Most recently, two after we talked about voting on this bill. Um, so, for all of those, I would ask that we have a moment of silence. Thank you, my colleagues. Before we dive into um, what is turning out to be at every stated a very charged agenda today. I want to wish everyone a belated Shana Tova and an easy fast as we move through the Jewish holiday season. And following up on the opening of our last stated meeting, I want to reiterate the ability of City Council and City of New York employees to enroll in the New York City Gives program, enabling them to automatically direct a portion of their paycheck toward qualifying nonprofit organizations. Yesterday, I returned from Puerto Rico, where I saw firsthand the devastation that has been wrought by the succession of hurricanes that have hit Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, and the greater Caribbean. The, sale, the scale of destruction cannot be overstated, and help is desperately needed. I don't think it's coming fast enough. It will take months if not years, and it'll be years, to rebuild much of the island and parts of the Puerto Rico that we once knew may never exist again. This has become obviously a climate crisis, a health crisis, a humanitarian crisis, and as our federal government drags their feet on providing relief 
to over 3 million U.S. citizens, this has become an undeniable moral crisis. I want to thank Mayor de Blasio, and I want to thank the New York City Office of Emergency Management for att their attention to this cause. They deployed relief efforts early, and, 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 uh, and I'm immensely proud of that response. I was actually there at the request of Mayor San Juan Carmen Julin Cruz, who was asking for assistance, and the mayor um, heeded the call. And so we have some first responders and some emergency personnel that are helping uh, the metropolitan area set up emergency systems that are needed, distribution centers, et cetera. Um, but as the per current presidential administration refuses to suspend the Jones Act, this is incredibly critical. No ships, no ships, and we know that some of our sister islands want to provide support and relief. No ships can enter Puerto Rican ports unless they are on U.S. flagged and staffed ships. So we actually have donations that cannot enter Puerto Rico because they do not comply with the Jones Act. And we have gotten a refusal by this administration, and it is reported that Trump has denied the request to waive the Jones Act requirements, despite the fact that the same was provided to Texas and the same was provided to Florida. So. I want to ask and I thank the generosity, I mean the level of generosity that has been expressed and demonstrated, contributions and donations, physical donations, is unbelievable. It really is um, inspiring and in a time where we have so much um, that is drawing at us and draining us, it's great to be um, uplifted by, by the support that we're getting. Um, and obviously we're trying to figure out how we centralize all of that. There's so much that people are giving and so many people that want to volunteer. We definitely want to help build some sort of an infrastructure to provide that relief and that help um, to the Caribbean, particularly Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Uh, many of us come from communities with close ties to the islands and nations affected this year. If we're not coming from the islands ourselves, um, many of us are, obviously our relatives are. So I really hope and encourage people to continue to aid in this mission to recover and to rebuild. And so then jumping into the docket for today, we're going to begin by voting on multiple land use items, including the 126th Street Bus Depot Redevelopment and Harlem African Burial Ground Memorial Project located in my own district of East Harlem. I want to thank Reverend Patricia Singletary and the entire Harlem African Burial Ground Task Force. We just met them earlier today at the ceremonial. I want to thank them for their years of dedication and hard work to ensure the historic cemetery at this site is finally properly memorialized. I also want to thank EDC and their staff for patiently working with us on framing a viable project that respects the history of this site. This vote comes after a long series of conversations and negotiations with the task force and community stakeholders on how best to commemorate the historic importance of the site while also serving the needs of our current community through its redevelopment. The project will include approximately 730 residential units with preference for proposals that maximize the number of housing units at the deepest levels of affordability, including 20% of the project affordable to extremely low income households of 30% of area median income. 315,000 gross square feet of commercial, retail, and office space with a commitment to local hiring and dedicated space and ongoing funding for both an indoor and outdoor memorial to commemorate the Harlem African Burial Ground Memorial. And this has obviously been a delicate conversation, a lot of hard work. We're proud of the agreement we've come to with the neighborhood advocates on promoting the history of the space and imparting the respect that it deserves as a final resting site of the unjustly enslaved. And our first legislative item is going to include, will be introduction 1375A, sponsored by Minority Leader Steve Matteo, which would require the Department of Transportation to provide electronic notification to affected council members, borough presidents, and community boards upon its approval of a permit application to open a street segment or intersection that has been reconstructed or resurfaced within the previous five years. On the staff, I want to thank Faiza Malik, Jonathan Maserano, Emily Rooney, Tirza Nasser, Jeff Baker, and Aisha Schomburg. Intro 1031A, sponsored by Councilmember Mark Levine and Transportation Committee Chair Idanis Rodriguez, would require the Department of Transportation to conduct a study 
of traffic congestion resulting from truck deliveries in Manhattan below 59th Street and in downtown Brooklyn. The bill would require the study to include traffic congestion from truck deliveries at all hours of the day, night, and overnight, and to include an analysis of the feasibility and necessity of implementing measures to reduce traffic congestion resulting from truck deliveries. I want to thank Faiza Malik, Jonathan Maserano, Emily Rooney, Terza Nasser, Jeff Baker, and Aisha Schomburg. Uh, intro 1292A, sponsored by Councilmember Costa Constantinidis, would require the Procurement Policy Board to publish rules to facilitate the development and implementation of agency programs to accept electronic procurement vouchers and each city agency to develop and implement programs to accept procurement vouchers electronically to the extent practicable and consistent with the operational and fiscal needs. On staff, I want to thank Alex Polinoff, Casey Addison, Jeff Baker, and John Russell. On legislation relating to the sale of second-hand vehicles, Introduction 1539A, sponsored by Consumer Affairs Chair Rafael Espinal, would mandate that used car dealers disclose certain information to consumers, including the price of add-on products, the total cost of the vehicle, broken down by monthly payments, and with or without any add-ons, the lowest APR offered by a finance company, and any other financing-related disclosures the commissioner prescribes by rule. It also requires used car dealers to offer a two-day contract cancellation option whereby consumers may cancel their vehicle purchase and any related financing contract within two days, subject to certain conditions. An introduction 1540A, sponsored by Councilmember Dan Gorodnik, would require secondhand automobile dealers to conspicuously post and provide prospective buyers with a consumer bill of rights. I want to thank Rachel Cordero, Balkis Merig, Ali Ali, uh, Jeff Baker and Israel Martinez. And representing a major step forward in the health of New York City, the Council will vote on the following package of three bills related to regulating the sale and consumption and consumption of hookah and other non-tobacco products. Intro 139C, sponsored by Councilmember Vinny Gentili, would prohibit the opening of new hookah bars by eliminating the non-tobacco shisha exemption in the Smoke Free Air Act. It would allow existing hookah bars that earn more than half of their revenue from hookah-related sales to continue to operate by creating a new permitting system operated by the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. Intro 1075C, sponsored by Councilmember Idanis Rodriguez, would add signage requirements to hookah bars permitted to operate under the permitting scheme created by Introduction 139C. It would require that hookah bars post a prominent sign at their entrance and in any area in which smoking occurs, warning of the health risks associated with smoking. And intro 1076C. Oh, we have a lot of C versions today in this agenda. A lot of work that's gone into all of these. And introduction 1076C, also sponsored by Councilmember Rodriguez, would set the minimum age for the purchase of non-tobacco shisha, rolling papers, and pipes to 21 years of age, bringing them in line with tobacco products and e-cigarettes. With the passage of this bill, all smoking products would have a minimum pur purchase age of 21. Staff, I want to thank David Seitzer, Z. Emmanuel Hailu, uh, Crystal Pond, Jeff Baker, and Jeanette Merrill. And the final four bills being voted on today relate to standards and practices being carried out by the Department of Buildings and the Department of Housing Preservation and Development. Introduction 934A, sponsored by Councilmember Steve Levin, would create a real-time enforcement unit in the Department of Buildings. Staff, I want to thank Guillermo Patino, Megan Chen, Jose Conde, Sarah Gastelum, Jeff Baker, and Jen Wilcox. Intro 1359A, also sponsored by Councilmember Steve Levin, would require HPD to audit buildings receiving benefits under 421A tax exemption program to determine whether such buildings are complying with the applicable affordability requirements. An introduction 1366A, sponsored by Housing and Buildings Committee Chair Jamani Williams, would require HPD to audit buildings receiving benefits under 421A and to determine whether such buildings are in compliance with ap applicable rent registration requirements. Staff, I want to thank Guillermo Patino, Megan Chen, Jose Conde, Sarah Gastelum, Jeff Baker, and Jen Wilcox. And finally, after eight, more than eight months of reviewing extensive feedback from stakeholders, a public hearing, and hundreds of hours of conversations with local laborers, unions, day laborers, developers, contractors, community organizations, and many other interested parties, the Council will vote on intro 1447C, which will establish safety training requirements for workers at construction sites. This bill is sponsored by Housing and Buildings Chair Jamani Williams and Council Member Carlos Menchaca, would require workers at most construction sites to, un, uh, to receive between 40 and 55 hours of safety training as specified by the Department of Buildings. 
You can clap. I'll let you clap. You can clap. <laughs> the bill. The bill would also include provisions to help workers in getting this training, including allowing laborers to continue working while they complete the training and having the Department of Small Business Services develop a program to ensure that all workers have equal access to training, particularly those who may have a harder time obtaining training through their employers, notably day laborers and workers employed by small w MWBE contractors. Too many fatalities have occurred on construction sites in this city including a recent death just one day after the announcement of this bill. So it has clearly become well past time to, task action, to take action on ensuring the safety of our workers and residents. Staff, I want to thank Guillermo Patino, Megan Chen, Jose Conde, Sarah Gastelum, Ed Atkin, Jeff Baker, Jen Wilcox, and Ramon Martinez. Um, and with that, that ends communication from the speaker. Thank you. And now discussion of general orders beginning with Council Member Gentili. Quiet in the chambers, please. Today, the Smoke-Free Air Act gets a modern look. While the 2002 Act outlawed tobacco smoking indoors, <laughs> Intro 139C now brings smoking, now brings smoking of non-tobacco shisha, casually referred to as hookah smoking, under the Smoke-Free Air Act. This bill also recognizes the dangers to smokers' health using non-tobacco shisha. Any way you cut it, research shows hookah smokers inhale large, high levels of carbon monoxide, tar, and other hazardous substances, including car carcinogens associated with the combustion of charcoal in the hookah pipe. And the water in the hookah does not filter the effects. Moreover, these chemicals are more deeply inhaled for much longer periods compared to smoking one cigarette. The Center for Disease Control found one session is equivalent to smoking about 100 cigarettes. Seven years ago, parents from the Brooklyn's Arab American community made me aware that many teenagers used casually engaged in this kind of smoking at bars, restaurants, and hookah lounges. Now this will end. But recognizing those who run full hookah lounges as small businesses, those sites will be grandfathered in if they have at least half their gross sales related to the sale of non-tobacco smoking product. If they register with a $25 permit from DOH, refuse to allow entry to those under 21, institute new ventilation, sterilization, and fire code requirements, they can remain open. But if found guilty of adding tobacco to any shisha, they will lose their permit to operate. 139C clears the air on the dangers of non-tobacco hookah smoking. Too many youngsters unwittingly inhale this toxic smoke and workers and neighbors of hookah lounges suffer from the secondhand effects of it. Hookah smoking indoors has been the elephant in the room. By making it part of the Smoke-Free Air Act, 139C protects the integrity of the act, ensuring New Yorkers will have clean air in public spaces. It recognizes the health dangers, promotes the city's efforts to denormalize smoking. Council member, and, please conclude. Yes, okay, well. Restricts access to the establishments where hookah can be smoked. I'll save the thank yous for when I explain my vote. Right now, I want to remind you that hookah smoke is no joke. Thank you. And I ask all of you to join me thank in you, voting Council yes member. on intro 139C. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Jamani Williams. Quiet in the chambers, please. Thank you uh, very much. I have uh, two bills. One is 1366A. I want to thank Council Member Levin for his assistance in co priming, uh, making sure that uh, those who have 421. 421A, 421 uh, tax abatements uh, are audited by uh, HPD to make sure they are following uh, the abysmal program that was and the worst one that we have now. Uh, also, I have a 1447C. Uh, I want to thank a co prime council member Menchaca and the speaker for their leadership, uh, as well as Ball President uh, Gail Brewer. Uh, I'm going to explain more also in, in my stated, I mean, my. Uh, voting remarks, but I want to make sure that we are clear uh, that we addressed uh, all of the issues that were brought to us by everyone, union, non-union, uh, REBNY, developers, day laborers, MWBE. This was not a rush job. This took eight months. This discussion has been going on for years. We passed six bills of the package 
uh, in April. No one said that it was a rush job on that, and we had the hearings in January. Uh, again, I, have, I would defy anyone to show a bill uh, that would have been better to pass for all of the things that we agreed upon. I want to lift up some of the workers, Juan Chanero, Joe Pacheco, uh, to Constantinos Putamosis, I apologize if I did not pronounce the name right, Emmanuel Sobral. Uh, I do want to thank uh, some of our partners, uh, including uh, Gary LaBarba, who has been a phenomenal partner uh, in this conversation, uh, and people like Charlene Nimmer. <laughs> Quiet in the chambers, quiet in the chambers. Quiet in the chambers, please. Thank People, you. Uh, I get like a couple seconds back. People <laughs> yeah. like uh, uh, Charlene Nimmons from uh, um, the Public uh, Communities, Inc. started off well, but she continued to engage. Uh, I would, as I said in the press conference, I would rather have uh, enemies who tell me that they don't want something than friends who pretend. And I say that because uh, this was tougher than when I was dealing with the police unions. I just want to make sure I put on a record that Rebney was an abhorrent partner in this. Uh, they were disreputable. Uh, they told untruths. Uh, it was almost immoral what I saw happening at Rebney. Uh, and I expected them to be a better partner than what I saw her. The bill is closer to what they wanted, but they are complaining. And I must say the bill is further away from what uh, the unions wanted. And they, every step of the way, worked with us. They grumbled, they complained, they lobbied, but we made sure we maintained that this was safety for everyone, uh, not just for some, and I com congratulate them. I think Revenue has a lot of work to repair trust when we negotiate. As I said in the press conference, the only way that I can explain what they did is a paraphrase from uh, Rick James, and that is, uh, the love of money is a hell of a drug. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Quiet in the chambers. For those, yeah, this is how we express our approval. Thank you. Councilmember Menchaca. Thank you, Public Advocate James. So I rise to speak on 1447C, a third version of a bill that started, yes, eight months ago. Logramos algo muy importante ahora, ahora algo histórico para proteger cada trabajador en la ciudad de Nueva York. We are protecting every single worker. This is a beautiful moment to celebrate. The table that was set invited everyone that needed to speak on this issue, from day laborers that have never been invited before, with the leadership of Gary LaBarbera and his entire team. Pat, Shh. Pat, thank you so much for your incredible leadership. The entire team came together, even with the MWBE construction companies and Rebney. The road was tough. But everyone was dedicated to that one mission, that we did something legislatively with budget and a real change in culture to make sure that not one more death come before us in our construction sites, in the richest city, in the country, potentially the world, that we set an example for others. And we are going to change that culture today. And I want to thank all the council members that have the courage to stand up today to that bigotry, to that misinformation, and that we're going to say yes, yes to every single worker. The day laborers have been such a beautiful spirit in this conversation that were supported by everyone. And I just want to lift them up for a moment. These are folks that have been supported by the council in the past to bring initiatives into every borough. These day laborers were once not at all connected to OSHA. Now they're training their own fellow workers in the language that they speak. This is the power of the city. This is the power of our council to support this kind of legislation. I am so proud to be here. And the leadership that Chair Williams showed every single moment in those tough discussions should be praised. And I'm so happy to call him my brother. Si se pudo, hermano. Let's keep doing it. Let's keep rocking it. Thank you so much to everybody in this room. Thank you. Thank you. Minority Leader Stephen Matteo. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I just want to make some uh, brief comments on the bill that I've introduced that we're voting on today um, about utility cuts and street cuts. And um, since we've started here in 2014, um, our colleagues and the speaker and, and, and those like Borough President Otto and uh, Council Member Borelli, when uh, he was elected to this council, we've been fighting for more funds for roads. And we have paid more than 4,000 lane miles since 2014, investing $1.6 billion over 10 years. Our roads are starting to become drivable again. 
but that progress and the significant investment of taxpayer dollars we are making is being undermined almost every day by unnecessary street cuts and substandard repairs made to them. You don't have to drive or walk very long in the city before you come across a shoddy patch of asphalt or a sinking trench where there used to be clean, contiguous, contiguous pavement. This isn't just an aesthetic problem, it's a matter of safety. It's a matter of properly managing city resources and keeping our infrastructure in a state of good repair. The streets are a lifeline for our businesses and especially for out of borough residents who have fewer transportation options. While intro 1375 will not solve the entire problem, it begins the process of creating a solution. This bill will require that DOT notify local officials once they issue a permit for work on a recently paved street and give us a chance to help correct or minimize the damage. It will also facilitate better communication between all parties involved and provide much needed transparency to a process that has been anything but transparent for many years. We certainly have more work to do to fix this process, and that includes improving the standards of repairing the street cuts, but right now there's no written or legal standards for these repairs, and that has to change. But this is a start. I want to thank my council colleagues for their support, the speaker, uh, Chair Rodriguez, and uh, particularly transportation staff, uh, central staff, and uh, my own, and I urge my colleagues to vote yes. Thank you. Quiet in the chambers, please. Council Member Rodriguez. Thank you. It, I'm proud to stand here today with my colleague and fellow colleague on intro 1031, Councilmember Mark Levine. It, with this bill, we will create a task force that will help to have a, a study a, about the impact of truck deliveries in our street. We look forward to the recommendation that this task force will put forward to advance our effort to, tack, to, to tackle congestions in our city. I also would like to speak about the other bills uh, with the increasing popularity of hookah and its prevalent use, particularly among young people. We face a great public health challenges that we must address now. The rate of use among Hispanic, especially Hispanic, Asian, and Latino youth of hookahs is something that is hurting their health. According to the Department of Health, New York, New York, New Yorkers between 18 and 20 years of age are three times more likely to smoke hookah than people 20 and 21 and older. In 1075-A and 1076-AA, we require similar warning on the health risks associated with the smoking shisha and non-tobacco smoking establishment and raise the age of hookah to, for, to 21. As with the cigarettes used, smoking hookah presents great health risks for users as well as secondhand smokers such as workers at hookah establishment. Today, we're sending the message to everyone. If you want to use hookah, go to a hookah bar. But if you want to have a dinner in a restaurant, that's not a place to, for hookah to be sold. Thank you. That concludes our discussion of general orders. Report of special committees. None. Report of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs. Intro 1539A and 1540A, second-hand auto dealers. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Contracts. Intro 1292A, electronic vouchers. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance. Reso 1639, business improvement districts. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Reso 1658, organization funding. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Reso 1659, rescindment in the expense budget. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered M548 and Reso 1661, transfer of city funds. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered M549 and Reso 1662, fiscal 2018 capital budget. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 754 and Reso 1663, Noonan Plaza. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Health, Intro 139C, Hookah Establishments. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1075A, Signage Warning for Shisha. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1076A, Prohibiting the Sale of Smoking Products to Minors. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 934A, Real-Time Enforcement Unit, Department of Buildings. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1359A and 1366A, 421A, Tax Exemption. Amended 
recommend that and coupled on general orders. Intro 1447C, construction site safety training. Amend that and coupled on general orders. Report of the committee on land use LU 738 and Reso 1664 through LU 742 and Reso 1668 on page 5, property tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. LU 751 and Reso 1669, automated accessory parking garage. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 756 and Reso 1670, HPD application. Coupled on general orders. Report of the committee on transportation. Intro 1031A, traffic congestion study. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1375A, DOT resurfacing notifications. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, LU 733 and Reso 1671 and LU 734 and Reso 1672 zoning amendments. Coupled on general orders. LU 735 and Reso 1673 city map amendment. Coupled on general orders. LU 736 and Reso 1674, disposition of city owned property. Coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, commissioner of deeds. Uh, coupled on general orders and ask, I ask for a roll call vote on all general order items. Baron. I, with the exception of 738 and the accompanying resolution, LU 738 and the accompanying resolution. Thank, Thank you. you. Borelli. I and all except 139C, 1075, 1076, 1539, and 1540A, and I'm especially pleased to vote yes on 1447. Chin. I just want to congratulate to all my colleagues, and especially to Councilmember William for your courage. Um, I vote I and all. Thank you. Cohen. Constantinides. Madam Public Advocate, may I be allowed to display my vote? Yes. I just want to talk briefly about intro 1292, which we're passing today. Uh, you know, this council has created a great deal this session relating to environmental uh, concerns and meeting the 80 by 50 mandate. There's a lot we can do to ensure that even the smallest of government transactions are green as well. Every day, the city agencies interact with hundreds of contractors from dozens of different fields. Many, if, many times, they generate a receipt, procurement invoice or other document from the transaction. This means that in the age of smartphones and tablets, hundreds and thousands of pieces of paper are being generated by the city activity every week. There is simply no reason that this should continue. Uh, that's where intro 1292 comes in. It simply directs all agencies to accept vouchers and invoices electronically and instructs the, the procurement policy board to promulgate rules to assist them in doing so. I want to make sure I thank our uh, our chair of the committee and great friend, Harold Rosenthal, and the speaker for all of their leadership. I thank my colleagues for their support. And each one of the trees uh, that are being cut down can absorb up to 48 pounds of carbon per year. So by you know, ceasing to use trees, we are going to be you know, reducing our goal of 80, but you're getting to our goal of 80 by 50. Uh, I am going to vote no on intro uh, 139C. Um, I on all on the rest. I just have some concerns relating to my community and my neighborhoods voice their opinion, and I'm going to vote no on 139C. Thank you. Quiet in the chambers, please. Crowley. I vote aye on all. Deutsch. Aye on all. Drum. Aye on all. Eugene. I vote aye. Ferreris Copeland. Aye. Garadnik. Aye. Gentili. May I be explain, um, excuse, explain my vote? Yes. Congratulations to all my colleagues on their great bills being passed today. On 139C, there are many people to thank in a seven-year journey to get this bill on the floor. I first want to thank the parents uh, from Brooklyn's Arab American community, led by activist Kathy Katari and Pastor Kader El Yatim, for bringing this issue forth and causing me and my staff to investigate and ultimately draft legislation. Also, I have to thank my colleagues in government, especially the Speaker, uh, Melissa Mark Viverito, Council Members and Health Chair Corey Johnson, and Council Member Yadonis Rodriguez for, for all being strong proponents for regulation and protecting the health of minors. And I congratulate Council Member Rodriguez for his two pieces of legislation today in regard to hookah smoke. I also want to thank the administration, particularly John Paul Lupo, his staff, and those at the Department of Health for being willing to partner with us and for working on acceptable and workable mechanism to implement these changes. On the staff side, I'd like to thank the irrepressible Ramon Martinez, the wisdom of Laura Popa, the hard work of legal counsel David Seitzer, who was instrumental in getting a handle on all parts of this issue, 
and who labored through all the meetings, hearings, and numerous drafts of the bill until we got to the C version today. Policy analyst Crystal Pond and Z Emanuel Hulu, and finally my legislative director Jonathan Shabshehis, who's lived with this bill for a very long time and assisted greatly in its drafting. Madam Public Advocate, it's been a long time coming, but today I proudly vote aye on intro 139C and aye on all the other items. Thank you, irrepressible. Thank you. <laughs> Greenfield. Irrepressible, not able to be controlled or restrained. Sounds about right. That's a fair description of Mr. Martinez, although I think he definitely has other qualities. How do you vote? Other, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use my time. How much time do I have? Two minutes? May I explain my vote? Yes, you may. Thank you very much. I only have good things to say about Ramon Martinez. I um, congratulate all my uh, colleagues. I uh, appreciate the uh, speaker's uh, warm remarks on the Jewish High Holidays, and certainly I'm hoping that we have an easy fast. I uh, join in her remarks on the ridiculousness of the non-waiver of the Jones Act. And I do just want to uh, address uh, f uh, some of the controversy regarding uh, 1447A. I uh, see, I'm sorry, you're right. Uh, uh, I actually heard a joke. One member said that we're going to get to a Z version. I don't think that happened yet. So I, I think there's two lines of criticism, one which is fair, one which is not. The line of criticism that is not fair is that there's criticism on the process. I personally have been involved in the process. There were hundreds, if not thousands, of hours of process and conversations and discussions and deliberations. And I witnessed many versions of change. And I think that anyone who's aware of the process would understand that the process was a good process and was a fair process and was a respectful process. As for the second line of the criticism, which is that the bill is not perfect, that's a fair criticism. But very few of the bills that we pass are perfect. It is a nature of negotiations that we end up with bills that are inherently imperfect bills. And this bill certainly could have a few tweaks that uh, I would have wanted. But on balance, I think many of the challenges and the changes and the concerns that we have were in fact addressed and therefore I'm proud to vote aye on this and all other pieces of legislation. Thank you. Gordenchik. Permission not to explain my vote. Um, <laughs> I just want to say uh, thank you to all my colleagues and especially to Chair Williams on his hard work for 1447C. Uh, we've seen an epidemic of death on construction sites in the city of New York. I know and all the members of this council know that we can and must do better. So I want to thank all the people that worked on that. I want to thank the chair and the staff who worked long hours to make this as acceptable as possible while hopefully saving many, many lives as we go forward into the future. And I also want to say to my uh, friend Ira D, I named my son after an Ira D and he's doing just fine. I vote aye on all. Johnson. Aye on all. Kalos. Permission to uh, also vote on land use call-ups and to explain my vote? Yes. I just uh, want to... Uh, Council members, is your mic on? How's this? There you go. As a uh, co-primary sponsor of Intro 1447, I want to thank uh, the housing chair, Jamani Williams, for the courage of carrying the bill and getting it over the uh, finish line and uh, getting that touchdown for all of us and every single uh, one of our workers in the city. We've asked ourselves uh, how many more must die and now moving forward, people working on construction projects over a three family will actually get training before they go onto the job. And uh, it's still not quite as much training as you need to uh, be a real estate agent or cut somebody's hair, uh, but it's a, a good start and I'm proud to vote on this and I on all. King. No on 1539 and I on all. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye on all. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, first, I want to congratulate Councilmember Levin on both the real-time enforcement unit and the uh, 421A documentation bills. Um, and just to add my voice of praise, I guess 1447 may be at its C version, but I think the effort to bring home a bill we can all feel good about rates an A and not a C. Um, uh, and I do want to thank uh, all the folks who worked hard on it, but I just do want to especially thank Jumani, who took a lot of phone calls from me. Uh, and I think navigated a process that comes to something that I think we can feel very good about and I believe it's going to make a real difference in saving lives and in construction workers' safety. Thanks to the folks up in the balcony as well. I vote aye on all. Thank you. 
Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, my colleagues, today I want to thank you very much for voting uh, on two pieces of legislation under the Housing and Buildings Committee that I am sponsoring. The first, Intro 934A, will create a new real-time enforcement unit, as the Speaker said, within the Department of Buildings that will track, monitor, and swiftly respond to work without a permit that endangers and threatens our residents in their own homes. Um, this is the final piece of the Stand for Tenant Safety legislative package made possible by the dedicated coalition of grassroots activists and tenant organizers uh, that, uh, that really made this package of legislation happen, along with my colleagues in the Progressive Caucus and, uh, and the Speaker. Um, I want to uh, especially thank uh, Brandon Kilbasa, Luz Rosero, Sonia Martinez, Efrain Philippe, uh, and um, uh, Carmen uh, Hurtado, Marina Chevy, and Rufina, and Rolando Guzman, and Phil Schmack and Kay, uh, who advocated for this legislation. Um, and uh, I want to acknowledge the, the, uh, the Housing and Buildings Committee staff, uh, Jen Wilcox, Megan Chen, uh, uh, Faiza Malik, uh, Guillermo Patino, um, as well as my staff, Jonathan Boucher and Ed Paulino, uh, and uh, special acknowledgement to the speaker and, uh, and Ramon Martinez for uh, making this bill as strong a bill as possible. Um, uh, I know it, uh, it, it followed, it lagged a little bit behind the rest of the package, but uh, that was uh, necessary in order to craft uh, a strong bill. And this will, for the first time, uh, have a real-time enforcement unit within the Department of Buildings. It will increase uh, the, uh, the, the response time for complaints uh, from 40 days on average now to no longer than 10 days uh, for work without a permit complaints and 12 hours if it is a threat to uh, safety. So uh, I also want to thank, uh, I also want to acknowledge uh, Councilmember Williams uh, on 1447 and, and, uh, and Councilmember Manchaka and all the great work that they did on that uh, bill. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Levine. Thank you. I will be voting aye on all except for no on intro 139C. Thank you. Thank you. Maisel. Yes. Manchaka. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. I just want to add to my comments earlier. Um, the, uh, oh, and, and before I, I continue with my comments on 1447 scene, I also want to uh, wish a Shana Tova to my Jewish brothers and sisters. Um, the work that, that happened with 1447C was, I thought, incredible story. Um, Gary and Pat Purcell and Santos and, and Ligia and Gonzalo and Manny and the teams that they brought in. Um, I want to also give a shout out to Karen Blondell from my, uh, from my district who really advised me uh, at every corner about, about the, being, being in the industry and understanding it from her perspective as a NYCHA resident. These perspectives I've never seen in a room before together talking, and I think that we learned a lot about the power of communication and really setting, setting the standards for having, having good and open communication. There's a lot more work to be done uh, around our construction. Uh, safety, uh, we get it, but I'm so proud of, of that work that we have in front of us. So thank you so much to all these brothers and sisters, people I call family at this point. Um, and then finally, I wanna thank my chief of staff, Veronica. Uh, Veronica uh, did so much every single day to pull people together and, and keep us all in line, but also reminded us about what it was what, what this is all about, having come from the industry and co having come from, from, um, from labor. So thank you all, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Mendez. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Miller. Permission to explain? Yes. First of all, I do want to say I vote aye on all, but in particular, I want to just congratulate Councilmember Williams and all those involved in 1447C. Once again, this council has demonstrated that we value people over profit, that this was always about saving lives, to bring in safety to an industry that lacks safety, that no other industry would have seen the loss of more than 40 lives over the past year and a half. And, and, and would have stood that. 
and often these were black and brown men and women of color that were suffering at these hands. And there's been many narratives about this impact on our communities. Our communities deserve better, and this legislation gives them that, that they deserve. So thank you so much. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Palmer. Aye. Thank you. Perkins. Aye on all. Thank you. Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Um, I'm extremely concerned about intro uh, number 139C. Um, asking for um, a flawed business model to, to try to work in hookah bars. I think it might actually even encourage more smoking. Asking for uh, hookah bars to make more than 50% of their profits off of the smoking portion of their business doesn't fall in line with the business model of just general hookah bars. More alcohol is consumed in these bars than actual uh, hookah products. So if you're smoking, uh, if you need to smoke 50% of the sales, uh, they're going to have to start churning out more hookahs, not less. Um, I just think this uh, legislation is flawed. I wish we would have had more conversations about what the business model looks like. Um, and uh, I want to vote no on intro 139C. Um, but on the other pieces of the legislation regarding the hookah, I think we're well done. And I want to say for intro 1447C, uh, it's an, uh, an amazing day today. We finally are starting to see um, uh, parts of uh, our work here um, aligned with a lot of the work that we've been doing um, on the outside that speaks to true and real safety for our workers. I want to say that many of the deaths that happened over the last couple of years have been mostly Latino workers. Um, and uh, now they're not voiceless. Uh, now they are being recognized and we're going to um, make sure that we pass these pieces of legislation and this piece of legislation in their name. So uh, congratulations to Jamani Williams and Carlos Menchaca on the work you did on that bill. And I probably will, again, eye on all except for intro 139C. Thank you. Thank you. Richards. Uh, aye. Thank you. Rodriguez. To explain my vote? Yes. <clears throat> Hookah has been eliminated from LA, Toronto, and even the Congress of the Dominican Republic. And the reason why those cities that we've been competing for good hub policy is because they know that have been killing a lot of people. Recently, Mia Sushi, a bar in my district on 185th and San Nicolas Avenue, was shooting down Shh. by the liquor license because based on the article that the Daily News printed a few months ago, the last incident was a person who was intoxicated for using hookah. I believe that what we're doing today is going, no, what we are doing today is being sure that we establish good health policy and that we don't go backward. The crack was invented in my community in Northern Manhattan. We have 104 homicides every year. A lot of people, especially youngsters, they've been using hookah combined with liquids, combined with other pills that create addiction to a youngster. If anyone wants to use a hookah, as I said before, go to a hookah's bar. It is the rise of any individual to do whatever they want in their private life. However, it is unfair for us in the name of yes, creating more jobs to try to justify bad policy that can create addiction to a youngster. With that, I vote aye. Thank you. Rose. I vote aye on all, and, and I want to congratulate Councilmember Williams on um, this legislation, 1447C, um, coming from a borough where we've had numerous uh, accidents and deaths and fatalities due to unsafe practices. Um, I, I commend you on this legislation, and I, I want to thank you for ensuring the safety of all of our workers citywide. Thank you. Thank you. Rosenthal. Pass. Sure. Okay. Traeger. Vote aye and all. Thank you. Ulrich. I ask for um, permission to vote on land use as well. Yes. I vote aye on land use and aye on all on the general order calendar. Thank you. Thank you. Vaca. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Valone. Madam Advocate, moments to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I congratulate all my colleagues today for their great bills, and I, I vote aye on all. No one would ever claim for me to be a poet, but on my right in today, I, I just felt compelled I needed to express um, how I felt like so many of us did today. 
So here's my, my simple attempt at a poem. Today I rise and do not take a knee and stand with the hope and promise of our continued unity. I stand to respect the men and women who have fought to protect my family. We stand for those heroes who gave the greatest sacrifice to protect our rights and liberties. So I join the generations who have stood before me to honor our freedom and that we remain the beacon of light and liberty. Thank you, Madam Advocate. Thank Everyone. you. Thank God you, Councilman. Williams. May I excuse me, my vote? Yes, sir. Uh, first, I want to say uh, that that was a great poem, um, and those of us that kneel, kneel for the very same reason. Um, I um, want to just continue what I was saying about uh, 1447C. Uh, um, just to clarify, I saw a tweet. I wanted to make sure I clarified that it was the unions who also grumbled, who also lobbied, and also pushed back. But they uh, were, as a true partner should, uh, stayed at the table and helped us get to where we needed to go. And I also want to just lift up, as, as my colleague did, uh, the day laborers who came kicking and screaming hard and also did the same thing. All the people who availed themselves uh, saw that we were addressing all of their issues. Uh, my word means a lot to me. I know my colleagues uh, do as well. And we said we weren't going to have a union-only uh, bill. Uh, we said that we were going to keep safety as a focus and not allow this to be a proxy. We did all of those things. We started from a framework where everyone agreed we needed some uh, additional training. Everyone agreed that OSHA was a good framework, and everyone agreed that we needed some additional training. We did that. I'm very proud of that. And this is about the culture of safety. Uh, this will not end the issue, but it does help push that erosion of culture um, backwards. Uh, what we have here, including the changes in the, in the fines and the fees and the refresher courses that are needed, will take a, a, a huge step forward. I do want to thank uh, everybody who assisted, including uh, staff, uh, Mike Toomey, my uh, legislative director, um, Jose Conde, Sarah Gasolum, uh, Megan Chen, who heard more than one choice word from people, uh, Ed Atkin, uh, Ramon Martinez, special shout out to Guillermo Patino, the legislative council. This is his last. Uh, stated, so I want to thank him and congratulate him as he moves forward. Uh, John Paul Lupo from the mayor's side, the commissioner from the mayor's side, and all of the advocates and the stakeholders who helped us uh, move forward. As was mentioned, this bill is not perfect. I just ask for folks to let's focus on the things that need to still be tweaked, but don't make things up that aren't there. Uh, I again ask our uh, media to ask people what they sent us were their concerns, then look at this bill in black and white and tell me what we could have done better, including having a $5 million commitment. That's just the first step. And 3 to $6 million to the Department of Buildings. And most of that money is going to go to local groups, and we are going to have additional funding before to address the main problem we heard with MWBE and day laborers, to make sure that people who can't afford this have access to the training. That would help. This is just a, a pretty, pretty good day for this council. Uh, we took something that was a hot potato, made it real, and I think we're going to save some lives here today. Thank, Thank you. you. Rosenthal. Uh, I have uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Quiet um, your chambers, please. Proud to vote aye on all. Um, and with congratulations to my colleagues, uh, Councilmember Williams, who stayed with this, um, and Councilmember uh, Levin for some really smart 421A bills, um, but in particular to Councilmember Constantinides, who uh, really is ahead of the game in thinking about procurement reform and bringing the city into the 21st century uh, in its procurement, which will ultimately drive down the costs of uh, contracting in New York City. So congratulations to all. Thank you. Councilmember Williams. Uh, thanks. Uh, I vote aye on all with the exception of uh, land use 738 and a company resolution. Thank you. Matios. Sorry, I abstain on that one. Councilmember Matio. No one, 139C, 1075, 1076, 1539, and 1540. Yes on the rest. Thank you. Van Bramer. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Quiet in the chambers, please. Shh. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, briefly, I, I vote proudly aye on all, but I do want to 
particularly commend my colleagues, Council Members Williams and Menchaca, for this very important piece of legislation. I also want to thank all the folks who sat and spent a lot of time with me, including Gary LaBarbera and Pat Purcell, uh, my good friend Bernard Caligari and the laborers, uh, Mike McGuire, the plumbers in my district. Uh, it was an important discussion to have, uh, and I'm glad we had it. Uh, all work is worthy, and all workers deserve to be safe. And the question was often asked in the campaign uh, to pass this legislation, how many more must die? Uh, it's my hope uh, that with this bill passing, uh, the answer will be none. Uh, no more will die. May that be what comes of this legislation. And with that, I'm proud to vote aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry. Speaker Mark Viverito. Thank you. Three pages. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of land use 738 and resolution 1664, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, one negative, and one abstention. N, intro 1539A, which was adopted by a vote of 39 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. N, intro 1540A, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. N, intro 139C, which was adopted by a vote of 37 in the affirmative, five negative, and zero abstentions. N, intro 1075A, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. N, intro 1076A, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. The revised land use call-up vote is now 42 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to the committees as indicated on the agenda. We do not have, okay, I guess you want to make it rip, rip, let it go, go ahead. Okay, settle down. We're still in stated session. And now for general discussions, we begin with the star of the hour, Councilmember Jamani Williams. <laughs> quiet in the chambers. If you're exiting, please exit quietly. Those in the balcony, we thank you for attending. Congratulations. Councilmember Williams. You want to go now or later? Okay, Council Member Levin, Steve Levin. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate. Um, I just actually wanted to uh, take a moment to um, uh, lend my thoughts and prayers to the people of Puerto Rico um, and uh, to my colleagues and uh, constituents who have family in Puerto Rico. Um, you, have, uh, you have my full thoughts and prayers with you at this really difficult time. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member, and I too join uh, with others. Again, our thoughts and our prayers are with those in Puerto Rico. I've got friends who have, have family. Please reach out to the Hispanic um, Federation, and for those in Dominica, there is a, a Dominica Hurricane Relief Fund as well. We pray for Puerto Rico, Mexico, and those in the Virgin Islands. The next speaker is Council Member Traeger. Thank you, public advocate. Colleagues, today I ask for your support for Introduction 1720, which would create a task force to evaluate Hurricane Sandy recovery efforts and develop recommendations about how our city and others can prepare for and respond better to future natural disasters. Over the last few weeks, our thoughts and prayers have been with all those impacted by the harrowing destructions of Hurricanes Harvey, Irma, uh, Maria, 
devastating earthquake as well in Mexico. Our fellow Americans from the Gulf Coast to Florida to Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands have turned to New York for disaster response support, relief, advocacy, and advice on how to approach the daunting task of recovery. As we approach the fifth anniversary of Hurricane Sandy, recovery for New York City is well underway, although far from complete, and progress has been made on improving resiliency and emergency preparedness. Our recovery has not always been smooth, but through those challenges, we have gained valuable insight on how to navigate complex aid processes, how to engage survivors in impacted communities as active participants in the recovery process, and how to build stronger, more resilient, more prepared neighborhoods. This task force would include reps from government agencies, the nonprofit sector, the faith-based community, and residents from Sandy impacted neighborhoods across the city to reflect the wide range of experiences with recovery and to develop holistic recommendations for how to best approach disaster recovery and emergency preparedness. I want to publicly thank Staten Island Borough President James Otto for his steadfast leadership on Hurricane Sandy recovery efforts in his borough and for his advocacy for a review of the successes and failures of our recovery uh, efforts thus far. This legislation is born out of a shared desire to ensure that we learn from the challenges of Sandy recovery. Introduction 1720 will help us create a better blueprint for disaster recovery, both for our city and for others coping with the devastation of a natural disaster. I respectfully ask my colleagues to sign on. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Rodriguez. Thank you. I would like to invite my colleague and any New Yorker to go to the co-naming of Willie Mays, uh, which we will do this coming Friday at noon, where his son, Willie Mays' son, will come and also the Vice President of the San Francisco Giants. And again, that's gonna be Friday at noon. Uh, I also would like to speak about uh, the crash, that ha the bus crash that happened in Councilmember Coote in Queens where a few New Yorkers lost their life. After that crash happened uh, with the support of the speaker, we are putting together a transportation hearing on October 26th on charter buses. We would like to know how DOT is regulating, especially those stops used by the charter buses. And again, inviting my colleague to be part of this hearing. That's also any New Yorkers interested to know on how we can regulate more, especially the area where DOT and the city has power for, which is more related to the stops that they are getting the permits for. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Ira Danique Miller. Hey, hey, that guy started something. <laughs> So I just want to say that Councilman Rodriguez, he did not steal my thunder. He just really um, touched on a really important issue, which I was going to speak about. As we talked about um, and congratulated everyone about 1447 and this impact that it's going to have around safety and, and, and um, providing a safe and work environment for, for workers, uh, conversely, uh, what we witnessed last week in Flushing is as a result of an industry that over the years have been deregulated uh, in so many different ways that workers' rights have been diminished and undervalued. This is an industry where over-the-road ride drivers do not even qualify for overtime, therefore causing them to work long hours and drive a fatigue, which has been uh, resulted in many of the accidents that we've seen. And I want to make sure that... that um, I'm there in a part of this, uh, uh, working with the council member and the members of the transportation committee that we address this issue um, that has been long plaguing this industry. And so certainly it's not just the over the road, but there are many folks that are operating even within the city. Um, as we struggle to regulate these industries, there are others that are coming in and finding ways to usurp that regulation that the council has put forward. So I'm looking forward to working with you on that. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Council Member Constantinidis. You got it. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Um, I will ask my colleagues today to join me in supporting intros 1708 and 1709, uh, taking on asthma. There are 84,000 children in the city of New York they're diagnosed with asthma, 7,000 every year are hospitalized. And there's a real cost to that. Every year, those kids miss, on average, between 10 and 30 days of school. It means they're falling behind their classmates for no fault of their own, other than being sick. Every day, the families have to make tough choices about how to spend their dollars. Staying on an asthma regimen is very expensive. And uh, there are a few medications you can take just to stay well, 
And when you're sick, it's a whole lot more. Uh, so these bills today that I introduced with my colleagues, uh, Councilmember Corey Johnson, Helen Rosenthal, and I, Danique Miller, one would put a nebulizer in every school, making sure that uh, in a pinch, when there are children in distress, that we have the apparatus in the school for the kids to be safe and deal with that distress so they don't have to miss more school. The second bill would create an asthma map, uh, looking at age, race, demographics of asthma in New York City and hospitalizations, making sure that we know where the clusters of asthma are and that how we can deal with those repercussions going forward with real policy. As we you know, do so much when relating, relating to air quality in the city of New York, and this council has made that a huge uh, uh, force uh, behind of what we do, we need to know where the asthma is, and, and primarily it's, it's in communities of color and in low-income neighborhoods. We need to make sure we can, how we can deal with those pollutants in the neighborhoods and make sure we protect our, our, our students and protect our, our, our populations. So I ask my colleagues to join these bills in making sure uh, that we can fight asthma in the city of New York. Thank you. Thank you. And our last speaker is Council Member Williams. Thank you very much. Uh, I, too, just want to add my voice uh, to those who are suffering from hurricane and Shh. earthquake uh, relief, including uh, Puerto Council Member, could you turn your mic on? There you go. Uh, including uh, Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, both that are U.S. territories. All Americans, they both are being very much ignored and not addressed. Uh, by too many people, including this president, who is uh, more focused on protest. Uh, speaking of which, uh, many of us uh, said from the beginning that we have to uh, protest Trump from day one, uh, not to wait. Uh, people were proud to see when Colin Kaepernick did what he did. Part of me wants to thank the president because he had the exact opposite effect of what he wanted. Over 110 players took a knee this weekend, and everyone is focused and talking about this issue. Uh, we can't forget, however, that these protests and these issues did not start with Trump. Uh, they have been around uh, for the inception of this uh, country. Everything that we enjoy about this country, everything, 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 began with protest. Some, in fact, the inception of this country started with violent revolution. Yet and still, we believe and pretend that protest is not needed to propel this country forward. Protest is meant to disrupt, it's meant to make people uncomfortable, it's meant to call attention to issues, to demand that they are focused and the issues addressed. We cannot confine protest to when it's convenient, although people pretend as if this is a protest that they don't support, but support other ones. The people who don't like this are very often any other protest that people they don't support as well. History, however, will show us that many people uh, who say they marched with Martin, they voted for Kennedy, they supported Muhammad Ali, never really did. They were part of the group of people who were bashing them. My expectation is in the not too near future, people will say they took a knee with Kaepernick, and he will be elevated to where he belongs. Um, what I will ask is that people who are expressing their patriotism uh, through saying the pledge do not demean people who are expressing their patriotism uh, by sinning or taking a knee. I could argue that it is even more patriotic, but I will at least say it is the same for this particular argument. I will argue as well that many of people who are making those arguments, like Trump, are doing so many things, saying so many things, supporting so many policies uh, that is un-American, particularly when it comes to the ideals, far more than any protest ever will be, which is probably the most patriotic thing that we can do. Thank you. Thank you, and let us keep in, uh, in our thoughts and our prayers the 16-year-old who lost his life in the Bronx as a result of senseless violence, and let's pray for the other child. And hopefully, they'll, he'll make it through. And now, to close, the speaker, Melissa Margarito. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Um, I want to just lastly just mention to the st uh, to the members here that we have two staff who are leaving us, uh, moving on to other endeavors, and we wish them the best. Uh, Guillermo Patino in the Housing and Buildings uh, Committee staff, and Faiza Malik in Transportation. I, I know they're they're leaving. Yeah, yes, I'm surprised. So, but thank you very much for your service to our city council and to our city, and good luck in your future endeavors. Again, I uh, definitely want to join in, in um, what the public advocate just said with regards to the unfortunate incident in the Bronx and the death of this young uh, student. Uh, senseless violence obviously is, is has no place in our city. Um, and also just to remind, uh, members and staff that we did circulate information on where people can contribute and be supportive of efforts uh, in 
in Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, and Mexico. Uh, so please make sure you pass that around to your uh, communities as well. Uh, and uh, I thank you all very much. Have a great afternoon, and we are adjourned.